Laura, this is a clear act of political retaliation. There's no other way to put it. You laid out the sequence of events the very next day after my conversation with you on the air warning the American people about how dangerous a Kamala Harris presidency would be. They show you've been waiting for. If this is your first time tuning into the Miguel Lopez show, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share so we can continue putting out content. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure if you're aware that there are multiple terrorist lists held by the DOD, FBI, all those related agencies. So we have hundreds of known terrorists in our watch list, international terrorists on our watch list coming through the southern borders and they just being let out and put in our neighborhoods. Don't believe me because I know some of you are going to say like, oh no, this is not happening, our borders are secure because you believe everything the media said, everything the Democratic Party said and I don't know how else to make you understand and I just don't trying to make you understand because I learned that when you argue with a stupid person, you will lose because they have more experience than you have been stupid. It's an argument that I'm not going to win, so I am not going to waste my time trying to point the truth to you blind mother, mother people. Oh my God. So let's see what the Attorney General Floria has to say about this known terrorists that have been let out in a neighborhood. Roll the clip. Listen to this. A fourth suspected Palestinian terrorist was just stopped at the border in less than a month. He was arrested Monday in New Mexico, and it comes just weeks after three other suspected terrorists were caught crossing near San Diego. Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody is demanding answers from the Homeland Security after reports show the Biden-Harris administration released nearly 100 people who were on the terror watch list into the United States. The report found that, quote, more than 250 illegal aliens on the terror watch list were encountered by Border Patrol at the southwest border between fiscal years 2021 and 2023. DHS has released into American communities at least 99, with at least 34 others in DHS custody, but not yet removed from the United States. Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody joins me now. Attorney General, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for diving in, digging in, trying to get answers on one of the most important and concerning topics of the day. So what have you learned so far about why DHS is allowing these people to enter our country, people who are, have suspected ties to terrorism? Yeah, I know. As, as the news seems to be focusing on whether or not Kamala Harris, uh, you know, shrugged off the assignment from Biden that she was responsible for stemming the tide of migration over our border. You know, as this back and forth is going on, I'm astounded that buried in that is the most terrifying admission of yeah. all from the Biden administration, in that, you know, the ones that are coming across and we're coming in contact with, that's hundreds, almost 400 on the terrorist watch list encountered by this administration because of the failed stemming of that tide by Kamala Harris. Compared to 11, by the way, under the Trump administration. But here's the most terrifying news that no one is picking up on, that we finally, finally have an admission from them. They have released, after coming in contact with these people, 100, 99, almost 100, could be more now, because this was through 2023, to roam our interior. Yeah. And here is the most frustrating part as an attorney general in a state where we know suspected terrorists have been before when tragedies have happened in this country. They are not communicating. When they realize they've released these almost 100 terrorists to roam our, roam our communities, they are not telling law enforcement in the states that they have done so. There is no communication. I've confirmed that with our law enforcement. And Americans wow. need to know, whether you title yourself the borders are or not, they have released into our interior and they are now roaming. We have no idea no how many idea. that they have tracked down. Not, yeah, H Attorney General, not only are they being terrorists. released, which is the worst part, but local communities aren't even being given a heads up, which is outrageous. 
Also outrageous, the House Judiciary Committee released a report that found that in one case, eight Tajik nationals were arrested June of this year for potential ISIS ties. Three of those migrants were released into the country via the CBP-1 phone app. So it's not like these people are evading Border Patrol. They're not gotaways. They are literally on their cell phones, signing up to enter the country, and they are being welcomed in. Yeah, so the so these people that we are on the suspected terrorist watch list, they're being encountered. They're being processed. They're being handed a paper by Border Patrol that says, hey, go report when you make it in your state. And that date that they're supposed to report could be eight or ten years out from now. But let me just tell you, they are also signing up on this, what I would argue is an illegal app, and they're not being vetted and stopped there. And so, you know, this is the, the greatest fraud of all time, where you have somebody that wants to be the commander in chief, Kamala Harris, wants to be in charge of national security. And now she's having to admit to the American people, oh, yeah, we've released almost 100 ter ter people on the terrorist watch list into your country. We have no idea where they are. And those that we've told to report to certain states, we haven't even told law enforcement. Wow. So, hey, trust me, I want to be your commander in chief and protect you and your security. Yeah. It's the biggest illusion of all time. Move over, David Copperfield and Chris Angel. <sighs> You've got the biggest illusionist of all time that wants to be your president. Yeah, and talk about illusion. She's also releasing ads and talking on the campaign campaign trail about how she's the candidate that is tough on the border. She is the prosecutor for president candidate. All the while, the Biden-Harris administration released 100 people on the terror watch list into our country. That's a fact that should never be forgotten. And believe it or not, one of our own, a soldier who has served this nation for over 20 years and still serving, a former congresswoman from Hawaii, Tulsi Gabbard, has been placed on a terrorist watch list, a domestic terrorist watch list. Talk about the insult that that brings, not just to us American, but to someone who also served in the military to see one of our own being placed on this list because the government administration is fearful of her work, of her knowledge, and that she's posting everything that's going on. The fact that her own commander-in-chief has put someone like her in a domestic terror watch list, it is mind-blowing. It is beyond belief. In the meantime, we have the freaking southern border open, and many, many hundreds of terrorists have come through those borders People that want to do harm to this country, that being on the watch list, have come to this border, have checked in, have been left out to roam in our own neighborhood. Yet, they put someone who joined the service to defend us against foreign and domestic people that want to hurt the United States of America. She joined the service because of the Islamic attack during 9-11. She put her life on the line. She's still serving and to be placed on a watch list by our own commander in chief. It is disrespectful. It's a disgrace. It's shameful. But how does this make you feel? Laura, this is a clear act of political retaliation. There's no other way to put it. You laid out the sequence of events the very next day after my conversation with you on the air warning the American people about how dangerous a Kamala Harris presidency would be, I was placed on this domestic terror watch list, which is called the Quiet Skies List under the Department of Homeland Security. The, the clear uh, pain and, and, and real visceral hurt that comes from this is, as you mentioned, like many Americans, I enlisted because of the terrorist attacks on 9-11, to go after the Islamist the ter terrorists who attacked us on that day, and to now have my own government now turn around and put me on a domestic terror watch list, uh, it, it, is, it, it hits to the core and, and is the ultimate sense of betrayal. But, but we look at why they are doing this. It has a chilling effect. It sends a warning both to me and to anyone else who even thinks about daring to criticize our own government, which is a guaranteed protected right under the First Amendment, <laughs> yeah. that, that we will be subject to a violation of our Fourth Amendment right to privacy 
uh, through this kind of, of surveillance. And that's, that's the biggest stress that's been caused by this entire situation, Laura, is now forever. I will, for, I will always be looking over my shoulder wondering if and how our government in any of these different agencies is surveilling me, watching me. Are they reading yeah, my they text messages? Reading, are they reading, listening to say. my phone calls? For some of you that are not in the military or have served in the military, it might be a little hard to understand the hypocrisy and the betrayal of putting someone in uniform on a domestic terror watch list. Someone that joined to defend this nation, someone that has given a vast majority of her life in uniform for this nation, someone who speak the truth and stand for American values, for our freedom, for our protection, and to have the commander in chief, because it comes from the commander in chief. Nobody can tell me otherwise because he is the ultimate head of the military. That's why he is the commander in chief. And put that person in a domestic terrorist watch list. It is so beyond any possible understanding. I am so furious right now. I felt so betrayed by this. It makes many of us feel embarrassed to have worn the uniform when stuff like this happened. When the nation that you chose to defend and give your life for comes back and betray you in such a big manner, in such a disrespectful way. And, you know, it's not just that she has been put on a domestic terrorist watch list. She's still serving the freaking same nation that is doing this to her. Talk about the irony. And she knows it's not because she is a domestic terrorist. It's because of her beliefs, because she has been exposing the truth and speaking her mind, speaking her voice without any fear. And I am in support of Tulsi Garba. I, every veteran, every service member should be in support of her and I hope she comes after the government. I hope she comes really hard and fire lawsuit after lawsuit because this is, this is beyond belief. I don't even think they do this in third world countries. And for that to be happening here in our own backyard, it is, it speaks value. It speaks value of the current administration of what they think about us American about people in uniform, about the military, about the men and women that are serving this nation to protect our nation from foreign and domestic terrorists, from any attacks. It speaks value that they give two F about the men and women in uniform, the men in arms, my brothers and sisters who laid their life in the line, my brothers and sisters who never made it back. It tells me they give two F about us, about them, and you guys still gonna go out there and vote for people like this. I bet some of you have people in your family that have wore the uniform or are currently in uniform. And just because they went after Tulsi, oh, it doesn't affect you. It affects you because they went after one of us, after one of your family members. Because going to her, going after her, someone who's in uniform, someone who sign up to protect this nation has been doing it for over 20 years doing that it's not just going after her it's going after every veteran after every service member that still wears the uniform and the disrespect and the cowardice and the betrayal from this administration is shameful i anyone that votes for these people like you know what if you know me and you vote for these people, might as well like just stop talking to me. Yes, I said it. Everybody's free to vote how they want, but when you vote for stuff like this, it tells me you are promoting this, you are supporting this action, and you're telling me you also don't give a crap about people in uniform, the people that have laid their life on the line, the people that have died to protect your stupid freedom. And if you know me, look at me. If you know me, you're in my circle, don't even, yeah. You might as well just stop talking to me 
and I said what I said. I'll see you in the next one.